So uh, if you want a picture of yourself, you can go to, tw to my Twitter account. I just tweeted a picture from the stage. It's a little play. So I'm Jerry. Um, I run the US operations for a company called Comarg. We're a global loyalty vendor, an engagement vendor, and an IT integrator present in a lot of countries around the world, United States included. Let me just grab my clicker real quick. Oh, there it is, OK. So this is me. This is what I look like when I'm uh, better groomed and uh, had more sleep. This is the website of our company. I also run a couple of other businesses. This is uh, all connected with, with Comark. Isaac Cloud's a cloud engagement and uh, gamification engine that allows you to automate gamification and engagement processes. Sonar Active is a, a digital creative agency that is essentially a, also a technology pirate ship for Comark that builds some really cool stuff on wearables, on, on the cloud, and uh, in the internet. Uh, I also, when I have time from all that, write a blog on the side about engagement and gamification and the user experience, and if you go to this address, you can also take a look at it. So I want to start out with a short story about what engagement is and how we approach it right now and what the real problem is. So there's this amazing story out of Seattle, out it happened last year. Um, there was this guy who went around a bus with a gun and he was threatening people and essentially uh, mugging them while that bus was running. And this was all on closed circuit TV, so, so essentially it landed in the news because the guys hear, heroically, at the end of the clip, tackle him down and uh, wait for the police to come. But the real problem is that everybody, while he was mugging on the bus, was looking at their phone and they were like texting, you know, watching videos, playing games. There's literally, literally people were sitting next to each other on the bus and the guy was pointing a gun at the person, at one person, and all the people sitting next to him were just like, I don't care. <laughs> and that, that went on for like two minutes. You know? so, so that just shows that you know, attention is, is really a, re a real-time asset. And there is, in fact, an engagement problem. I mean, if you're an advertiser in, 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 in today's world, uh, and you deal with that type of... Uh, competition, it's really, really hard to get the attention of, of, your, uh, of your customers. So this is, this is sort of where engagement comes in, and this is, this is where, what you need engagement for. And over the course of the presentation, I'll start out by talking about the internet of engagement, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll extend the internet of the engagement to the things of the engagement. So essentially, we'll get the internet of things for engagement in the end. But before I go, in, go any, any, any further into that, I just want to give you a really short introduction about, into what we really understand what engagement is at Comark. And it focuses on the context. So if you look at the screen, you can read it like this. The power of the engagement is essentially the in integral of the context of the user over the path that the user takes through your through your journey, right? Through your user experience. If you think about it for a second, yeah, that actually makes sense. I mean, the more context you put in front of the user while they're traveling down the path of your experience, the more engaged they will be. It's, it's pretty simple. So, so in essence, then, once you take that defini definition into account, um, your job becomes really easy. You just need to maximize the context of the user over their journey through your experience. It's, it's that simple. So to show you how that works on the internet and to, to build the leeway into how it works in the things, we, I'm going to go through a short study of what we've done for um, JetBlue. So before I go to the internet, I just want to talk about design a little bit. This is what we received initially from JetBlue when they started talking to us about social engagement for their um, True Blue loyalty program. And uh, we took their requirements, their ideas, and essentially 
extended them into a landscape of achievements, activities, actions that the loyalty member can carry out to build their context within the True Blue program. And as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling through all these slides. There's a lot of it. It's the, the context that we can build right now for the user both internally and user facing is very, very rich. And uh, what do we do with it? Well, we thought about it for a little bit and we were like, okay, so what's, what's the context of an airline? Well, I mean, it's a map, right? So why not take everything that the user has done and just put it on a map? Easy enough, but how do you get, how do you get there, right? So here, here comes the internet, right? You actually need internet to communicate with the users and to have a communication channel over which you're gonna build that context with them over an extended period of time. So this is a TrueBlue, um, this is the TrueBlue portal for a member. This is actually my account a while back. And uh, the integration is seamless. It's completely transparent. So the next slide shows you the engagement part of the TrueBlue experience which looks exactly the same, only it's another tab in their True, True Blue uh, program. So we took extra steps to make sure that the transition from the traditional loyalty program to the extended, enriched social engagement experience is completely transparent. So it's a, it's a full-blown portal that includes all of this information that we use to create the context of the user the engaged context of the user in the True Blue program that allows them to view all of the achievements that they have received, it allows them to see a 360 view of their engagement within the True Blue program, it allows them to see the friends that they engage with, it allows them to rank them glob themselves both globally and within their community of their peers. And uh, what, what, what does this actually mean in, uh, in practice? So what, 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 was the, what was the whole point of it? Well, the point of it is we want to project this context. We want to give them a tool to go out and, and promote the brand in social channels, right? So this is what integration of JetBlue badges looks like on Twitter. So essentially we we render an image for each and every user and uh, store those images per tweet on our servers so that whenever you look at Twitter and you look at a tweet that includes a JetBlue Badges link, that link also includes an image of that user's profile rendered down to, a, to an actual image. And if you look at these different examples, the amazing thing is that suddenly what I've been talking about at the very beginning, the context becomes very clear because every, every single person has a completely different context on Twitter right now for JetBlue badges. And in terms of measuring the engagement, well, I mean, you can measure the engagement of this tweet, which goes on and on by yourself right there. So there, there, there's a lot of things that happened in the process while we launched this, since we launched this project in, uh, July, on July 15th last year. One of the very interesting things was there was a completely spontaneous Facebook uh, user group that was created by the members of the loyalty program that's not touched, it's completely pristine from any corporate touch. It's, it's fully run by the users. They, ad they administer it, they remove users if they abuse it, they keep safeguard their rules, they write the rules. Oddly enough, they exchange very interesting experiences with themselves, such as changing how, how, how the badges program changes their behavior, their purchasing patterns, uh, they share that with their peers. So you can read that Anthony started gunning for partnership badges for things that I, that I was going to do anyways, rented from Hertz, stayed at a Hilton, bought some wines, and took an online survey all while using my JetBlue American Express card. And so, 
So there's testimonials like that on, on the Facebook group, completely independent source of information. They can look at how people really engage with the program and how you know, some of their habits really do change. So this is what, what, uh, what we designed the Facebook integration to be. Um, it's, it's pretty much, it's amazing. It's, it's like Facebook ads, only you don't pay a single dime for it. Right? It's, uh, we, we get some incredible numbers. It generates a lot of engagement because it's not branded. There's no sponsored ad tag anywhere. It's just users that suddenly receive this vehicle to build up their profile and share it with their friends about where they travel and what they do. So with all this machinery in place now, you know, I showed you, I showed you a... Uh, an equation at the beginning, it actually is about measuring how, I, how well they perform this. So to do that, we essentially track every single share, tweet, and public user profile created against anybody that ever visits the website. So whenever you, land, you take this link, you put it in your browser, you land on that website, we, we create a ghost account for you and track your entire experience up to the very point you join the program and convert into a known identified member, at which point we start to measure how much you spend. And then what we do is we actually calculate how much that initial tweet that got you there, in effect, in turn, was worth. Right? So if you want to think about it another word, another way, you can just say, okay, well, those guys essentially put a dollar value on a tweet, and yes, we do. So a couple of side notes about how, how well this scaled. It started um, on July 15th last year. It has 140,000 uh, members, other than um, an initial email blast to their member base. They uh, have not done any advertising of this program and it's constantly growing. Um, there's over 1.3 million page views, uh, 1.2 million minutes on site. Compare that to the price that you're gonna pay for a second on, uh, at Super Bowl, you know, you kind of get the ROI for, for doing a thing like that. Because these are people who are essentially sitting in front of their computer and watching your company's branded content online, just looking at it, interacting with it, full attention, not like drinking a beer and eating a hot dog. Well, some of them do. Um, and uh, 1.5 million Facebook impressions, which, which impressions translate into, into new members, essentially, because all these uh, links that go out to social media come back in the form of new registrations. So now, with that short introduction in, into the internet and showing you what we understand engagement to be, how we measure it, how we build it in the first place on the internet, uh, how we use context to provide a very sound theoretical foundation to not run into design problems you know, going forward, we can pretty much do the same thing for the things now. So you look, you look at this image and you know, the first thing that I think about when I look at it, me being the context devious guy that I am is what is the context, right? What's the context? Well, the context is that to the left of that tree, there's an American apparel store. So what I start to think about is, well, why? Why would anybody do this? So, you know, amongst all the, all the different responses to that question that you might, might have is, of course, the answer, well, to have a better conversion of people walking into the store. They might not notice all of the branding. There's actually not a, lot, not a whole lot of branding on the store, but, you know, they're walking down the street, they see, okay, American Apparel from way away, and they, they immediately start to think Amer American Apparel, American Apparel, well, and, and some of them are going to walk in based solely on that piece of branding on that tree. Now, what my problem is, I don't know how well that converts, but I really want to know. And uh, with the technology of today, with the internet of things of today, you can actually start to find out, right? You can actually start to maximize the context of your user's journey through the real world 
and measure how well that interaction converts into sale, right? It's really simple. You just put a you just put a beacon essentially in that tree, right? You just I just it just it just tempts me so much. I want I, I want to do it for American Apparel. I just I just go there as a shopper. I live that, right nearby that store in New York City. I just want to go and like drop a beacon into their um, their uh, um, their bush and then like start hacking away and, and like looking at how many people actually walk in based on that thing and crazy crazy. So uh, so that's that's sort of the end goal, right? But to get there. Uh, you need to start much slower. You need to start with a, with a very simple interaction, right? Because if we start to ping people to go into the store based off of a beacon signal, like I probably would in that American Apparel scenario right now, a lot of people might get freaked out and not understand where that notification is coming from. Right? So, so instead, we're, you need to devise a scenario by which you ed slowly educate your customer base into thinking about a world in which they, they know where they are and their device know where, knows where they are based on triangulation, you know, projections, signals coming from sources that were not there in the past, right? This is all happening indoors where, where GPS isn't as prevalent. So we designed this very simple example to show JetBlue Airlines, the direction that we're going to be heading with, with our technology, and they very much concur. Um, so I'm showing you a, a very rough draft of the concept that we will be actually delivering later in the future, which is the concept where the user picks up their tablet at the terminal and essentially gets guided by beacons to, to the store where they complete the transaction, right? So they go through the process of selecting what interests them. They, they're looking for the car rental. There's a little bit of augmented reality since we can now actually do this because we know where the tablet is without a heavy overload of you know, image recognition and all that stuff. We can just pick up the beacon signals and show the relevant information in an augmented reality setup because we roughly know where the guy is in the terminal and then we can just overlay the information on top of on top of the, the visual screen. You know, we, we give them a, a, a little bit of a map to guide them through the terminal. And we essentially, every time they complete a task like this, we reward them with a extrinsic or intrinsic reward, depending on the particular scenario, that leaves them satisfied and wanting, wanting for more, right? So the only thing that you need to start to think about when you start to do that is how well does that message convert? And now, when you think about the, the mechanism that I showed when I was talking about social media, about how a user essentially creates branded content that they inject into social media, and then you track the performance of that branded content, how it converts back to, back to your own property, and how it converts into sales, and what the value of that is, you can imagine a scenario in which, well, we're already doing this scenario, but you can imagine a scenario in which your business issues a push notification to their user based on their location, and essentially you can track the conversion of that push notification into sales, and that's, that's pretty much the Internet of Things for, for engagement. Thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>